Hello, and welcome to the Business Expo Learning Stage. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Michigan, for helping make this event possible. We are excited to have you join us today and want to encourage you to ask any questions you may have. You may do so by using the Q&A button located on the right-hand side of your screen. All questions will be answered at the end of the webinar today. Also, a friendly reminder that this webinar will be recorded and posted to our Travers Connect YouTube page within 24 hours. Our next speaker is Katherine Clairhout, Director of Admissions at Northwestern Michigan College, presenting a topic, Future for Frontliners at Northwestern Michigan College, a scholarship program for essential workers. Katherine is Director of Admissions at NMC. She has over 30 years of admissions and enrollment management experience in higher education and has been a national presenter for SEM Enrollment Management, the National Association for College Admission Counseling, the Michigan Association for College Admission Counseling, the American Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers, otherwise known as AACARO, Elucian, and the Michigan Community College Student Services Association. She is a contributing author to AACARO's Basic Guide to Enrollment Management and SEM Anthology. Catherine also shared a fun fact with me. She's in her 18th year scoring Division I college hockey for the WCHA, the Western Collegiate Hockey Association, scoring all of the home games for her alma mater, Ferris State University. Go Bulldogs! Catherine, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Jody. I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone who's logged on in to learn more about the Future for Frontliners program. We are so excited at NMC that this program has come along um, because it really is about um, taking care of the people that are essential workers who were uh, frontline during this pandemic that is still going on. Um, and so just a little bit of information about the program. It is a scholarship program. It is um, out there for Michiganders without college degrees who have worked in the essential industry during the state COVID shutdown between April 1st and June 30th. This scholarship provides frontline workers with tuition-free access to local community colleges to pursue an associate's degree or a skilled certificate, either full-time or part-time while you work. Um, I'm sure that there are going to be a lot of questions about this scholarship and some of the criteria with it. If you wanna um, ask questions at the end, please feel to do that. But Jody's gonna, if you've got something really quick and you wanna do that, Jody will get back to you real quick here. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about who is eligible for this scholarship. So eligibility means that you need to be attending one of the 28 community colleges here in the state of Michigan. Hopefully you're gonna choose something in your region because it is more economically feasible for you to do that than going someplace else. Um, so in um, the Northwestern Michigan region, um, we have uh, worked with about five or six different counties around us, but you do need to be a Michigan resident. Um, you have to have been here during that time period um, in at least six months prior to working as an essential worker to be a Michigan resident. Um, you have to have a high school diploma or the equivalent such as the GED. Um, I do know that I've gotten some questions about uh, students that are homeschooled. We do accept that as proof of graduation as well. I would need to review that document though first to clarify or to verify that. The other thing that is essential for this is you have to have worked in the essential industry at least part-time for 11 out of the 13 weeks between April 1st and June 30th of this year. Those dates correlate when we were in the uh, lockdown phase where we weren't able to go out and move freely about. That's why those dates are there. Um, you have to um, be required by your job at that point to either work outside of the home at least some of the time during that period um, you cannot have earned uh, an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree still to get this scholarship. But if you have, please wait because at the end I've got more information for those students who do have that, that criteria already met. 
Um, you also cannot be in default of your federal student loans. If you are, please uh, get with me afterwards and I'll talk to you a little bit about how we can help with that process and what you Frontliner scholarship application by um, 11.59 p.m. on December 31st. So absolutely critical that you do that portion of it. There are some additional requirements that NMC does require for our students. You need to submit an application to NMC. You also need to submit the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. We'll go through and show you kind of what that means and how that looks for you. So let's jump a little bit back into what is an essential industry or a frontline worker. So the state on their site, and I'll give that to you in just a little bit here, but it has a list of um, roles that people played during the, our pandemic and during that shutdown process. And you can see them listed up on um, the, the program here. Um, these are not uh, inclusive. So there are many more that this goes into. If you actually go to the web, the essential website, you'll be able to see uh, futures, uh, Michigan.gov frontliners, you'll see that these break down into several different categories. So they will show you kind of what other names these are um, for these jobs that you um, completed or did during that time. Uh, critical manufacturing, they'll talk about um, some of those jobs that you did there too. So there's a lot of different things out on here. This is not meant to be everything on the list. My advice to anyone who thinks they might be eligible is to just go ahead and submit the application with the state to find out because they will let you know if you're eligible or ineligible on that. And so there are tons of questions about these. Um, I will hold those till the end so you guys can ask me further questions regarding them. The futures for frontliner scholarships and attending NMC. So a lot of this information is pretty critical. The state has given us a very short window of when we can recruit for this program and when students can actually start taking classes. Um, so they, you need to start taking classes in 2021. So upcoming here in January. You do not, however, need to start classes in January. You can attend um, spring, which is our January semester starting off, summer or fall semesters. But you must take at least six credit hours in two of the three semesters I just mentioned here to maintain your status or eligibility for the scholarship. Um, you need to sign up for a program um, where you're either going to earn a certificate or an associate's degree. The certificate is usually 30 credit hours or less. An associate's degree is 60 credit hours or less. So um, you can anticipate that you would be attending four semesters um, to meet that criteria. And then, of course, NMC is a, here to help you. We are here to help you navigate through the application uh, process and the enrollment process. So we can help you. Um, once you're admitted to get getting into the classes that you need in making sure that the um, scholarship is being applied correctly. So one thing that's critical for you to understand, if we went back to the last slide here real quick, oops, is when you start taking classes in 2001, starting in January, so our semester start dates are listed here. So we do have our spring semester coming up in January. We will admit students into NMC, the college, directly up until the first day of class. So you have up until January 10th to, um, if you wanna start taking classes with us in the spring semester. Some of our semester courses start May 8th and can go as far as, as long as um, August 9th. And I say uh, as long as because our summer semester is broken down into a lot of different start and end times. There are some um, courses that go eight weeks, some that go the full 15 weeks. Um, so you can um, limit the amount of time you're in summer semester by taking a shorter um, coursework. 
Um, the fall semester then will start um, August 28th and run through December 18th. So these are all of the things to keep in mind as you're looking at going back to school or utilizing that scholarship. You need to make sure that you actually start in one of these three semesters. There are three steps to getting started in this process. One is to go to the Michigan.gov uh, frontliners and complete their scholarship application. You do need to go through that. I can pop out there real quick to get you where you need to go. It should take less than 10 minutes, but you're going to create an account and you're going to go through and let them know a, a bunch of your information. Do not be surprised if you get an email back from them asking to verify certain information. What I've consistently seen that the state is asking uh, back for uh, uh, students that are applying are um, they're asking to, to verify your workplace hours and they're asking to verify your length of employment. Now, some of this you won't be able to know, but your employers will, so they'll get back with you on that. The application process is usually pretty seamless on that. You will need to apply to NMC if you are not currently a student. If you've been out for a while, um, just know that we do require a new application if you've been out for two or more consecutive semesters in a row. So you will need to do that. If you're um, unsure of if you're still active as a student, um, go ahead and give us a call and we can let you know that. Our application process is pretty easy as well. It'll take you less than 10 minutes to do. The third thing is to apply for the, or complete the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. This, um, process has changed over the years. If you haven't done it in a while, um, you will go out to the government website and start the process. There is a couple steps to doing this. Um, first, creating a PIN that will act as your electronic signature on the form. The form also now um, connects directly to the IRS, which will upload tax information if we need to have that as part of that process. Um, we have seminars out on our NMC website that you're able to sign up with and to jump right in. We can help you complete the full FAFSA and walk you through those steps. These things, at least for the first one, completing the Future for Frontliners application needs to be done by December 31st. So as I've said, if you are not sure if you qualify, apply anyway. Let the state come back and tell you no. Um, and the best thing they can do is tell you yes. But re remember, if you don't do this process, the very first one here, before that deadline, they will not extend this deadline. Um, so make sure you get that in um, as soon as you can. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the Future for Frontliner Scholarship and what you need to do to kind of track your progress or where to go get help and to get assistance with that. So first for the application, I just gave that to you. Um, you can link on it or go to there. What this does, it creates an account and you can actually log back in and check your application status. When I submitted an application for this scholarship, mind you, I'm not eligible, but I did um, do the process. The um, return response says it's about uh, seven to 10 days before they'll respond back to you to tell you if you're eligible or not. Some of the verification processes that they're asking with this are taking a little bit more. They're taking maybe six to eight weeks to verify. So again, another reason why you absolutely want to go forward with this is, as soon as possible to make sure that you're eligible. Mind you, you just need to apply for the scholarship. You don't need to be eligible for that uh, deadline. The other thing that's here is the Michigan um, Customer Care Center. If you have any questions on the future for frontliners, you can go ahead and give them a call. There is their number. At NMC, I took you already, but if you go to nmc.edu, our application for admissions is right on that homepage for us. It's a free application. You simply need to have your um, a, an email address to be able to log in and to create the application through the portal system. 
Um, mind you that we need you to get admitted to send all of your transcripts and test scores to us. Um, when you apply, you'll get a checklist that will tell you what we still need for your application to make it complete, to make the admissions decision. You can send all, everything to NM, our admissions at nmc.edu. Um, if you need to take the NMC uh, placement test, we will contact you and let you know that. Placement is um, something that we use to gauge where to start you off in some classes. Typically our placement is for math and English and based upon high school GPA or test scores is where we will place you in those two categories. As always, we have enrollment services where anyone can call us to seek further information about that process. And you can also email us at frontliners at nmc.edu. The FAFSA completion is one that can be more complex for our students. You do need to go out and uh, file the FAFSA or apply for the FAFSA with the federal government. You would go to fafsa.gov. Um, and just be aware, um, once you submit that FAFSA, NMC will get that information from the federal government and we may need additional information before we can actually get you uh, your award package and scholarship. So it's not uncommon to have that happen, but just so you know, uh, NMC staff are there to help you with the completion. If you're stuck at any point, you can call us or you can email us at ssf at nmc.edu. Uh, we also have on our Future for Frontliners um, on our homepage, you will see scrolling on our homepage, there are uh, different times that you can log, uh, log into a live Zoom meeting as we're seeing right now. Um, and you'll have representatives that are there that will help you through that process. So what, so what does the scholarship actually cover? So this can get a little tricky, and so bear with me, and you might have questions at the end, but that's okay. For students who live in Grand Traverse County, um, those are people who are already paying a tax uh, for living in the county and a millage that goes to the college. For those students, uh, the scholarship will pay for up to 100% of your tuition and uh, district fees. So right now, currently, our credit hour, contact hour is $109 per contact hour. Um, the only thing that is not included that the state will not pay for with this scholarship are online and course mat fees are not included. But don't let that detour you up because I'll show you how that's gonna help you here at the end. Um, if you are a student who is living outside of Grand Traverse County, you, you can still get the Future for Frontliner Scholarship. And what happens is they will only pay for the $109 um, contact rate. You'll be charged the $227. Um, so you'll have to make up that difference. There are different ways that the college is uh, utilizing scholarships and grant money to be able to offset that for those students. So don't let that detour you from um, seeking or going forward on this will help you through that process. Again, the online and course mat fees are not included um, to be paid for by this. Um, the other thing that you should be aware of, both sets in district is what we call out of district as well. There is a $30.50 per contact hour for some general fees that we have. These cover our costs for technology, orientation, placement, career testing, all of this is covered under the scholarship. So just know that that is there. So the scholarship is actually taking care of quite a bit of the um, costs for you. There are um, additional costs, and I'll get to that in just a second here, but I did want to let you be aware of that with the COVID epidemic that was happening this year, this past summer in July, our board of trustees made the decision not to raise any tuition this year um, because we know what a, um, a burden this is on our students that we're already working with who are already attending NMC and those that are looking to come forward with us. So we did not raise our rates. So our rates as you see them are the same rates that we had for 2019 
through the 2020 year. There are additional expenses that you as a student going back to college or pursuing your degree need to be aware of. There are additional uh, books and supplies that you may need to purchase. Um, technology, a lot of times we're talking to students who don't have great technology at home. We do have hotspots for our students. We have um, Chromebooks that our students can um, check out. There's a lot of different things that we can help you with based upon those costs, but you're still gonna have transportation costs. And if you have children, you may or may not have childcare costs as well. These are things that always are above and beyond the tuition that the scholarship does not pay for. Um, but again, um, let you know that there are ways that we can help supplement different scholarships in for, uh, to take care of some of this information here. So currently, the statistics we have for the future for frontliners, there have been an, an overwhelming um, response to the scholarship through the state of Michigan. Over 60,000 people have applied for it. Now, that doesn't mean everyone will get it, but that means there's a lot of people looking to take opportunity, and you should. We highly encourage that. When you actually fill out the application, it is going to ask you what college you plan to attend out of the 28 uh, community colleges here in the state of Michigan. Out of that, NMC has received over 1,300 students that are, are applying for that program with us. So currently, we have about 1,300 students and close to 400 are current students at NMC. So this is something that is very well needed, something that we're on board and helping through. Uh, the state does anticipate the total application number going to 75,000 before that December 31st deadline. So they realize that there's a lot of people out there that want to take advantage of this, but this is just current snapshot, kind of the numbers that we're looking at and what the numbers are in our region. Um, if by some reason the state comes back and says, ooh, you're not eligible for that scholarship, we're not able to help you with that, don't let that deter you. And the reason I'm saying that is because of this slide. So the state, when Governor Snyder was here, um, started a coalition and started a, uh, a program where he wanted to make sure that all Michiganders have at least an associate's degree or a certificate. And he had the goal of being up to 60% of our population having that by the year 2030. So he put into place two different um, scholarship opportunities. One uh, Governor Whitmore went forward with and it is being funded this year. The second one is not, but I sh show that to you to let you know that the state is actively engaged in the process for higher education and helping students go back to school, get their um, degrees and helping with that. So the first one here is that Michigan reconnect. So if you're over a, the age of 25, you're a Michigan uh, resident, there is going to be money that's very similar to the uh, future for frontliners. So this um, actual scholarship is starting. We will get more information on it in February. So this is another avenue that will help students both the Michigan Reconnect and the Future for Frontliner Scholarship are what we call last dollar in. So when you submit that FAFSA, the state was very smart in their decision to make that one of the criteria for both scholarships because they want you to be able to file the FAFSA. And if you're eligible for any federal monies, the Pell Grants, um, you can get those scholarships first, and then the state will come uh, on the back end of it and pay the remaining balance on that. So they're utilizing um, that $35 million that they set aside for these scholarships in a very uh, fiscally economical way. The second um, scholarship listed here, which is currently not being funded, but it was in, in Governor Whitmer's um, executive orders from this past fall. It's called the Michigan Opportunity Scholarship. Um, and there are two different paths to this scholarship. 
Path One provides high school graduates with two years of free community college, um, which is something that there are a number of different states that are currently doing this. Pennsylvania is one that the state is watching very closely on this. And I would encourage you to go out and look and see how that program is currently running. The second path provides two years tuition assistance at a public or not-for-profit four-year university or students demonstrating financial need. So again, helping students to go further, obtain further credentialing uh, through their education. Um, and here's something I really wanna emphasize here, the, uh, our scholarship program. NMC has over 650 different scholarships. Um, we love to give out money. Our uh, board, our foundation has raised over um, millions, or I think it's over 30 million right now, dollars into our scholarship funds that we're able to offset the cost for a lot of our students. Um, and I really recommend that students, if you don't qualify for uh, the future for frontliners, do not let that deter you from applying or going forward with your degrees because we have so many scholarships here and available. And you really should take advantage of that process. We're at the end. I've left a lot of time for questions because I know that there should be some, because everything is not really cut and dried with this process that we're going through. Um, so Jody, you want to jump on in? Sure. So um, one of the questions was with the fees, what is not covered with the futures for frontliners? And one of them uh, was the online fees. So wh sure. what type of fees would those be specifically? How does that work? So there are certain classes. The best example I can give you is um, a biology class may have a math fee. Uh, coursework that you need to do the lab portion of that. It's usually a $30, $50, $80 fee that's connected with that. That online fee, um, I believe, what I don't want to speak out of turn, I believe it's less than $100 for that. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking anything that's really over and above or thousands of dollars. We're talking minimal fees here on the back end side of that, depending on the courses you take. I, I will tell you that um, this scholarship does cover all associate degrees at NMC. We do have a couple, a couple bachelor degree programs. It will not go towards those programs. Those are our marine technology, the four-year program. There's a two-year program they can do. And then there's also our maritime program. It will not cover maritime. Um, I've been asked before about our aviation program it will cover the aviation program. The only thing it does not cover for that program are the flight fees that are associated with it. Okay, okay, that's that helps. Um, there is another question. Uh, even though the government has furloughed student loans through December 31st, applicants need to show proof that they are, oh, do, I think it's do applicants still need to show proof that they are actively still paying during this time in order to, so no. if they want to apply, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't. Um, so we have, um, we understand that those are furloughed. It's only if you are in default of a loan. If you have deferred your loan payments, you are still eligible to, re to receive future for frontliners. Also, um, I didn't mention, but if you've been to NMC before and maybe have an outstanding balance, that also will not um, deter you from getting the scholarship. And we will work with you on making um, payment arrangements or anything like that for us to do. So um, we're able to work with students if they come back, if they owe us money in the past, we're still able to work with them to do that process. That's great information. So with, so in order of steps, someone applying would want to apply first at the michigan.gov website yes. for the Futures for Frontliners. And I've put these links into the chat. So anyone who's on the presentation now can see that. 
Um, I also want to just kind of review this for people watching it um, after it's recorded and uh, put up on our YouTube. So they would first apply at michigan.gov forward slash frontliners, then apply to NMC, and then complete the FAFSA. So December 31st is their deadline. How long will it take for them to hear back from michigan.gov frontliners typically? So they, they give you the email response that it's seven to 10 business days. Um, they will hear back. Usually if they, uh, uh, you hear back and say, hey, we need you to verify this. Um, and it's, they'll have one or two items out there for you. It's filling out a form and then them going back and looking at that. So that portion right now, because there's over 60,000 is the thing that are slowing um, them up. But we are able to download from um, the Treasury Department here in Michigan daily to see who is eligible and what has changed. We often know faster than the student does on what's changed and what they need. So they can always give us a call as well to be able to check their eligibility status. That's, that's great. And I did want to clarify to the email address that they would use for any questions to NMC about frontliners. I think I may have written that wrong in the chat. Sure. It's frontliners at nmc.edu. Okay. I had it correct. So that's great. Great. Because I'm sure there will be a lot of questions um, as people take on this application and they want to really get started with that as soon as possible. It's um, you know, we're already into November and December is going to be here before we know it. And then the FAFSA, I know uh, from experience, that can be a little bit challenging to figure out. Um, is that something, and I know you can help them with that, is that something that someone can sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and help them complete? Yes, absolutely. That's a service that we do already for our students, um, and we'll set up um, appointments to do that. Right now, we're not coming or sitting face-to-face -face because of COVID, but we'll definitely do that Zoom meeting and help you through it. And to go through that, um, the FAFSA, um, just so you know, it changed in the last couple of years. It used to be that if I was going to go to school next fall, I could not fill out the FAFSA until after January 1st. That form was not out there. A couple of years ago, um, the federal government changed that. You now can fill the FAFSA out in October. So October 1st started, you can now fill out the, uh, the FAFSA for the next following year. Um, so this will be able to allow you to um, get things better. And the information on the FAFSA, if people are aware, is prior, prior tax year. So it's not last year's taxes, which it used to be in the old version. It now, right. not last year's, the prior, prior year is what we call it, um, tax information. The really nice thing about that FAFSA form now, typically you only have to fill out half of it and you get to the portion where you need to have your tax information. And there's literally, you click a button to go out to the IRS website and it will upload your taxes right into that. So then that fills in the majority of what's left on that application um, to receive. So. Okay, yeah, that makes it much easier that they don't really even need to have their tax documents in front of them. They can uh, just get to that point and click that button. That's so, so much easier. <laughs> those those forms can be a little intimidating. <laughs> um, and I know uh, you also talked about the, the types of industries or types of workers who qualify for this. Um, is that a screen? Maybe we could look at that one more time. Yep. And just take a look. Okay. So chemical. Oh, right. Okay. So chemical supply chains and safety. Mm -hmm. Food and agriculture. So it does have the communication, including news media, if you were working there. The critical manufacturing, defense, industrial, base, energy, if you work any place with energy. Uh, financial services, any of your banks, uh, food and agriculture, those are your grocery stores, um, anybody who's working out in the field, um, anything like that. So there's quite a few different things mm -hmm. they recognize. And like I said, you can go to the Futures for Frontliners website 
and they will break it down even more for you. Um, so the transportation and logistics, it gives you, it talks about warehouse workers, transit companies, taxi or rideshare companies, all those different things that people had to do um, during that time period. Not to say that all you're doing now doesn't work or <laughs> isn't uh, valuable as well, but they're, they're looking critically at these, um, these specific uh, essential industries. I should tell you that Michigan is the only state that is currently doing uh, this scholarship program. So we're the first. Um, we'll see what other people uh, um, steal from us to, to do in their state as well, but we are the first ones here in the U.S. to be doing the scholarship. Yeah, we would certainly love to see it replicated in other states. It's, that's great that you're a model for that um, and, and can give tips to other states who might want to implement it going forward. Um, I'm hoping that uh, folks who see this will have a lot of um, folks who are in manufacturing uh, because I know just in phone calls that we were making um, starting back in March, um, so many of our manufacturers were able to stay open and are seen as um, essential and uh, lots of folks employed in that industry up here. So that will be really helpful for them. I think I have, uh, I don't think I have any other questions right now. Um, I am going to put into chat, uh, if you wanted to explain that YouTube um, video and I'll yes. put that so, in the chat. Yeah, so there's a really quick uh, video that the, the state has um, that talks a little bit about the, the scholarship in general. Um, so it will go out and show that. I can, I can, or, and I apologize, it's not working for us at the moment, um, but it's this video. So it will go and show you a little bit about this. Yep, that'll be great to have just one more bit of information out there. And uh, do you have a phone number that you wanted to share if folks have uh, questions and want to follow up with you? Sure. Um, it is out here um, on this page here, right here for enrollment services. Um, we have the 995-1034 number um, that you're able to call for us. The other thing that's really great is we have um, online Zoom sessions that you can um, jump onto. They're on our website, but they're typically Monday evenings, Wednesday late morning, Saturday mornings, and Sunday evenings. So we're trying to pick out times where we feel that people might have time <laughs> to jump on and get their questions answered. So those are those times for that as well. That's great, that's great. It's um, so many different forms of communications available. It sounds like all the bases are covered and um, folks should be able to find questions, um, or sorry, I'm sorry, answers to any questions that they might have. So that's great. Um, is there anything you want to say to wrap up? I think we're all finished. I think we're all set. Please give us a call or email us. Um, we're here to help you through this process and to walk you through. If you think you can't afford it, call us. We'll show you probably how you can. That's great. That's great. Yeah, with all those scholarships that NMC has as well, even if you don't qualify for the Futures for Frontliners, there's probably something else out there for them. Right. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. So thanks again, Catherine, for joining us. We really appreciate your time sharing your valuable information. We'd also like to thank once again, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Michigan for making this event possible. We hope all of you enjoyed the learning stage and encourage you to check out our uh, next webinars that will be on our traverseconnect.com website under events. These webinars uh, that we presented today on the learning stage will also be available soon on our YouTube channel. So you can check those out and share those with others who might be interested. And we hope you've enjoyed the virtual expo today as well. Thank you all for attending. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you at our uh, next event. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Bye-bye.